The opening chapters of the Bible are the seedbed for the truth found throughout the rest of Scripture. As we study the first 11 chapters of Genesis, we will discover principles that can guide us as we seek to have a new beginning with God. Are you in need of a spiritual reset? Good news. Our God is the God of new beginnings. Let's join Scott Pauley now. I never cease to be amazed how quickly I can go from walking with the Lord and enjoying God's presence and I think following the leadership of the Holy Spirit uh, to acting in the flesh. And, and don't let that shock you because that's true of all of us, how, how quickly uh, we can step out of the light and into the darkness. Uh, we see a vivid picture of that in Genesis chapter number 9 with Noah and his family. In our last study, we, we looked up in the sky, we saw the rainbow, we thought on the covenant of God and rejoiced in his faithfulness. And now suddenly, uh, we move from that brightness to darkness, that kind of light, to now the shadow of sin falling. Why would that be? Let's read just a little bit in Genesis chapter 9, beginning in verse 18. And the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem and Ham and Japheth, and Ham is the father of Canaan. These are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread. And Noah began to be an husbandman, and he planted a vineyard, and he drank of the wine, and was drunken, and he was uncovered within his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without. Uh, the, the Hebrew wording that is used here uh, means that he, he told it gladly. He told it flippantly. Uh, he, he made light of something that should not have been made light of. And Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward, and they saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. And Noah lived after the flood three hundred and fifty years, and all the days of Noah were nine hundred and fifty years, and he died. Now, we have here really a, a mar on the history of Noah and his family, a, a terrible scar, if you will. Sin always brings scars. Sin always mars everything that's beautiful. Everything it touches, it makes ugly. Only the Lord can take the ugliness of sin and make it beautiful. Only God can do that. But in our fleshly uh, responses and in our sin nature, we make a mess out of everything we touch. Basically, what I've just read to you is a picture of the old nature in a new world. Now, remember, they were given a brand new world. Uh, everything is, is clean. Uh, everything has been taken away. All the, uh, the wicked men around them are removed. And yet, this is what we're reminded of, that Noah and his sons still had that old Adam nature. They still had the sin nature. They got a fresh start, but they were not perfect people. I think this is one of the great misnomers and misunderstandings today. People sometimes think when they get saved, the sin nature is going to go away. Or they think when they really get serious about following the Lord and they dedicate their life to Christ and they determine that they're going to really get serious about living the Christian life, that they're not going to struggle anymore. But that's not true. Why is that? Because we still have the old nature. And in fact, until we get to the new heavens and the new earth and the new Jerusalem, we're not going to be perfect people. And we don't live in a perfect world. We're still fallen creatures, surrounded by other fallen creatures, living on a fallen planet. And so we must know this if we're going to respond rightly and guard ourselves against sin and destruction. And notice three things uh, that were characteristic of, of this old nature. The first was drunkenness. By the way, this is the first mention of drunkenness in the Bible. Uh, what does alcohol do? It makes a person lose inhibitions. It makes a person lose control. Uh, this is one of the great dangers uh, of alcohol uh, because the Apostle Paul said in the New Testament that we're not to be brought under the power of any. We're not to be brought under the control of anything except for the Lord. 
Uh, for the record, I still believe what Proverbs 20, verse 1 says, Wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Now, in Scripture, throughout Scripture, uh, wine, alcohol, is often uh, used as a picture of, of all of the pleasures of this life and the lust of this world. But specifically, uh, talking about the effects of alcohol in Noah's life, it brought terrible immorality and wickedness. We'll see that in just a moment. Friends, guard yourself. Uh, tell me five good things, just five good things that alcohol ever did for a person or for a family. Can you even tell me five? And if you'll tell me five, I'll tell you 50 wicked, awful, hellish, devilish things alcohol has introduced into our world. What it's destroyed in families and minds and bodies and lives. There's no place for alcohol in the life of a serious follower of a holy God. If you really want to be what God wants you to be, put it away. And so this first mention of drunkenness, I think, is very revealing because it is not connected to any good thing. It's connected to every evil thing. The second characteristic here is not only drunkenness, but deviant behavior. We don't know all the details. You know, Scripture is amazing because it tells us enough to not make men look like angels, to remind us that the best men are just men at best and that all of us have a fallen nature. We're all sinners Uh, I I don't care who you are. We all have the capacity to commit the worst, most awful sin. Uh, Let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. So Scripture is very plain, showing us the failures of even good men in Scripture, even God's men. But it doesn't go into the wicked sort of details very often in a setting like this uh, because God's intention is not that we plumb into the sewer. Uh, We can know enough about it to say, let's stay away from that. That's dangerous. That's, that's deviant. That's dirty. I don't need to get down in the weeds there. The Bible says that we're uh, to be uh, wise as serpents, harmless as doves. Uh, the Bible says we're to be wise concerning good and simple concerning evil. That's one of the great dangers of social media today. Uh, even the news today can prompt dirty thoughts because it gives so much explicit details of things that, frankly, you don't need to hear and see, and you don't need to think about and meditate on and store in the library of your mind. But we know just from a casual reading here, there's nakedness, there's immorality, uh, there's a lightness about things that should not be, be flippantly referred to. Uh, the, something happened. Whatever happened here was not pure, not normal, and not right in the sight of a holy God. And in the end, that's the only thing that matters. So there's drunkenness, there's deviant behavior, and then how does the chapter end? Death. Because the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Death is a part of living in these sin-cursed bodies and sin-cursed world. And so even Noah, a man who walked with God, a man who was a holy man, had his failures. He had his personal failures. He had his failure with family. And in the end, like everybody else, he died. What is this passage here for? I mean, why not just breeze over it? Why tell us about this this awful occasion? Because God is reminding us all uh, that even if you could straighten everybody else out around you, Think about this. Noah just had his family. Sometimes we think if we didn't have anybody else, we'd be all right. No, you still have yourself to deal with. The biggest enemy you have is you. Uh, Noah had great circumstances. Think, God gave him the whole world. He inherited it all, but that wasn't enough. No, we must always guard the flesh. You can't blame others, and you can't blame bad circumstances. The problem is with our own sin nature. So today, my friend, bring your sinful heart to God. Confess your sin to God. Uh, Stay humble before the Lord and stay holy near the Lord. Ask God to keep you right in the middle of a fallen world. Because in a moment, light can become darkness. May the Lord help us today to walk in the light as he is in the light and have fellowship with our God. No matter where you are or what you've done, you can have a new beginning with the Lord. A great way to experience this new beginning is to have a fresh start in your devotional life. We encourage you to get into God's Word. On our website, enjoyingthejourney.org, you will find a wide variety of devotional plans from which to choose. We hope they're a blessing to you. Thank you for joining us today, and may God help you to enjoy the journey.